Hello there. <clears throat> My name is L, and um, this uh, here tutorial is part of my collection of uh, random collection of um, lessons uh, to do with uh, using the command processor and in particular uh, making use of batch files. This uh, particular one, I suppose, would call, fall into the category of um, if, if it were uh, categorized with respect to difficulty, this would probably be in the uh, extreme category. So if you don't know much about batch files, uh, you know, just uh, click away and uh, uh, because you're not going to learn anything from this. Probably, unless you're a genius, in which case, uh, pick it up, no problem. All right, now uh, uh, here's here's my problem, or one of my problems, and it's always been the case for years for me. I've been doing this since uh, I was a teenager, you know, fiddling around with computers. And uh, one of the things I always wanted to know was, was um, how many available drives there were on my system. And, uh, you know, this being, uh, uh, as it indicated by this image here, I'm talking about the old days, back when, when everything was DOS. How, how would you find out um, how many drives there were? Well, first I had a program in a, in assembler that I wrote just using a, a straightforward debug. But eventually, I learned C and C plus plus, and uh, but in this case, it, there's really no difference. And I would always write, you know, as soon as I'd get a new computer, I'd always make this program and add it to my utilities. I've already already written it, but I mean. Look, so you can write it again. We'll make it C. You notice how I flipped the colors here. That's different from the usual. Let's just spruce things up and keep you interested in all this stuff going on. Going on. We always need. Uh, standard IO dot A. That's for printing uh, input and output, and in particular output. And uh, we need a special function which is in, in this file called uh, change der change drive uh, direct. I think is the header. Uh, you know, you can declare main any way you like. Now, this is C. We don't have to say anything. Okay, this is our entry point, main. And uh, what I would like to do is uh, declare an integer variable. Set equal to zero initially, and I want to go through a loop. Uh, now it's already equal to zero, uh, and I want i to be less than twenty. The number of letters in the alphabet, uh, and I want to increment each time in my loop. I want to say if that's called change drive, and you have to supply the, a number from one to tw one to twenty six. Well, I suppose I could put one here. And do it like that. Okay, so we're going from one to twenty six. Maybe this reads better for you. 
I can't not have this equals zero, sorry. That's just a habit of mine and, and, and I don't intend to break it. Always initialize your variable. So we're going from i equals 1 all the way up to 26 and no more. Uh, now this can either succeed or fail. When it fails, it returns minus 1. Now in that case, I want to, um, I think it's a put car, and I want to print out a character. So I will take i plus the character code for a is uh, represented this way. So this would be 41 in hex. And uh, now y is equal to 1, so I, I want to get rid of that 1 I have. And so if i is equal to 1, I should get a. And if i is equal to 2, I should get b all the way up to z. Okay, now uh, the compiler shouldn't complain about us not returning anything. Let's see if it compiles. Theta unresolved. Put car, maybe there's no underscore. That worked. See? Now there, you see what's printed out? All of the letters there correspond to. Uh, Cases where it failed to change to that drive. Alright, no, of course not. I'm, I'm going to be talking about batch files. I want to do this in a batch file. Uh, now, we can also make a couple simple. We could add features to our, to our program. We can do it the other way around. Uh, in that case, uh, this is going to print out all the drives that are used. See? C, D, K, L, and S are the drives that are in use. That's basically the difference between the, the two. Well, so since we can do both of those things, let's, let's use the fact that our program comes supplied with arguments. Uh, we get a, what we're given in main here is a character pointer and a pointer to that. Put a star here. It's called RV usually. And it's going to get these cons spray. Car, con, cons, cars. And I want these ought to be point, constant pointers. Uh, that way. To see if I can pull yeah, compile. Okay. So let's say um, we're either going to drink, uh, print uh, the ones in use or the ones. Uh, being used. So let's say if arc c equals two and arc b. Now this is a array of 
point is the characters. So the first, if the first array, first character is equal to, uh, I would say, let's say, uh, F for free and A for available. F, right? Now that's just you can type capital or a little f. That covers both cases. And I put those in brackets. Then I want to do the this loop, the one I just I just did. Right? Otherwise I want to do what I had before. Well, let's make sure. Uh, alright, see. Same condition exactly. Except instead of free, it's um, available. Now that should really be the default, right? Uh, free is available, sorry. Use, you for use. Sorry. Alright, and then the default is free or available or whatever. And we'll do it the other way. Yeah. Now we can now we can supply a use a u. If we say u, that means um, used, right? In use. Uh -oh. So no no arguments required. I get that. But if I say you, I get that. Okay, now there's a fully featured program. I'm gonna put it in my YouTube. I already have one there. Right, this one's better than what I had. Okay. Now, why would you even care about something like this? Well, I'll give you one good reason. Let's suppose you're in some directory, somewhere on your machine. Here's a, here's a directory I, I happen to be in lately quite a lot. And, um, Let's see now, well, it's in this directory. There's a bunch of stuff in here. Now there's, you see that t dot <coughs> uh, uh I often want to use that same t dot bat for, you know, many different reasons. Uh, I mean, uh, in the same way in many different locations but I don't want it to be in my global path it's something called T, right? It's specific to um, what it does is it builds an installer for my program uh, but um, for instance uh, uh, 
uh, I think two tray has see it has a T that uh, see see all these various um, uh, projects have the same T dot path. And uh, what I'd like to do right now, suppose uh, I know now I've invented an, another project, okay, and uh, it happens to be, um, let's say it's, uh, I don't know, suppose here. Now I want to copy that t dot bat. I don't have it. No, what one way I could do that is to put it into a standard location. It's not in the path, and always copy it from that location. And I could do that. Uh, but instead, uh, what I'd like to do is just I want to move it from here to here, right? And I don't want to type. I might forget or whatever. So I have another batch file called anchor. It works this way. Okay. So now it turns out that um, the U drive uh, has been set to my current directory. So now I can go back to where I want to go and copy U. Uh, see how easy that was? I don't have to type in the path or anything of where it is because I've given it a special drive letter. Uh, now if I want to get rid of it, I just do that. Get rid of it. Now, since uh, there are some drive letters being used, uh, I couldn't specify any driver letter, and what this um, anchor program did uh, was it, it selected a uh, an unused drive, and I have it set up in such a way that I, I can set a base drive where I, I wanted to choose only drives after a certain letter, and in this case it happens to be U. Okay, and I could change that letter if I like, uh, by, by just specifying a letter. Suppose I say anchor, I want this to, uh, to be um, let's see, K and L are here. Let's suppose I, uh, I want to use the only letters starting after M. No end available. Okay, so here it is N. Now I could even just get rid of that. And now I'm set it, it's in fact set up that way. I get N by default. I do it again. O is the next letter. See? So that's a useful utility. In general, uh, if I didn't specify anything, it would start at A. Now this this um, turns out that the way I'm doing this, the, the the uh, uh, drive, the, the root, of, let's say, the, the base drive is something that persists. It persists across re a reboot. So the next time I reboot my machine, my machine, uh, the anchor is set to start at the letter K. 
S is something that uh, I'm setting a different way. These are all substituted drives, and this here just shows what directories they correspond to. Typically, things that are too long to type in, and in this special case, S, uh, things that I cannot type in because they're, they involve uh, special characters. This is not really a T. Let me show you something. Um, let's see now, uh, CP. Uh, no, it, it still isn't showing us. It's showing us almost the correct thing. The only problem is the font. Let's change the font. Now this looks funny, but you can see that there's a little trademark symbol there. Uh, and that's, that's the character I can't type in. Uh, when the, when the current code page isn't, uh, this is called the ANSI code page, uh, Western European Windows code page, in which case uh, the trademark symbol is, is just a character, regular old character. But this normally doesn't use that code page. It uses uh, 437. I'm going to change the font back. Sorry. Whoops. Oh dear. Excuse me. And it's going to be uh, that. This one. There we go. This is the usual one. This, this here code page has a name too. Uh, this is the, uh, the, well, do, the DOS code page, the IBM, IBM code, code page, it has a name. I can't remember what it was. Anyway, now, so now that's the, uh, this is the intro part of, uh, this. This is going to be a two, two video series. Uh, we have our drive. And it's, uh, and that, for that we needed to use a C compiler. And, um, I want to do this using a batch file, but only using a batch file, and therefore no C compiler. Uh, so therefore, we can delete that. And we'll still be able to do the make an anchor program like this that can scan and find. And you'll notice that it doesn't use that because I just put that there. It's still working, right? I don't want that in there. Uh, it's still working and uh, it has no nothing to do with that drive. Okay, now part two, I'm going to go to the bigger format screen uh, uh, so that um, uh, we get a better view of uh, what I'm doing, although everything's going to be a lot smaller. Okay, so we'll see you. On the other side. Um, well, I might. Yeah. I'm going to change the format during this video uh, using a trick I know, but then, then I'll switch to a, a new video. Okay. Bye. Or, sorry, see you in a sec. Hey there. So here's the outer view. Before. That's where we were, and here's uh, what was, I was looking at. Um, uh, this is my usual screen resolution. It's not my usual background desk 
Okay, desktop background. Uh, uh, but I have many backgrounds, and a lot of them involve the um, smoking of cigarettes by various females. In that case, it's a young child, female, but mostly it's um, older ones. This one here is uh, this this particular individual. Her name is uh, Lindsay Lohan, who I discovered first. Um, when I was searching for these pictures of women smoking, stuff is a hidden subfolder on my desktop where I put things that I don't want to use in, put them in there so that I don't, I don't have to see them. I don't want to see things that I'm not going to use, but as you can see, my desktop is quite minimalist. <laughs> I got it down to three icons. Why do I need this one here? The reason I need that one, which is actually the, the thing that's doing the video, the links for the uh, settings file for this screen capture, is uh, on here where I usually norm I usually run it from, but this isn't a link to the program. Unfortunately, it's a link to this thing. I could fix that by making this not a link to a shortcut, but in fact, just a link to a program. Then I could get rid of another one and have it down to two. Virtual dub here. Uh, is on the desktop because I have a, a thing, control alt v which brings it up. And the reason that control alt v brings it up is because I have assigned that special key sequence for it. For it. So if I get rid of this one, I lose my hotkey. I have another hotkey actually, control alt x, which brings up this program, but you can't see that one, and I'll leave it to you to try and figure out how I work that magic trick out, which I could apply to this too. Then it would be down to one, exactly one icon on my desktop. Anyway, in the next video, as I said, I'm going to show you how to make the anchor batch file, which is useful as you saw. It's a useful tool in allowing you to mark a particular spot with a single letter and then navigate around your drive uh, and then use that single letter as a reference to the position that you wanted to save. That's why I call it an anchor. I want an I want to anchor that spot and leave it and, and leave it like, you know, a tag. I could have called it tag, maybe. That I can use to reference that location uh, very easily and not have, you know, not have to stay there. You can do that with Explorer, sort of. You know, let's say it was the same drive or same spot. Like utils. What are these spots? Here or something. Right? And now then you start up another version of uh, of Explore. Right? And then you can talk to toggle between the two. But there's a lot of stuff that you can do with the command prompt in a single step that would take many steps using Explorer and many difficult steps with Explorer. For instance, uh, 
something I just did recently. Okay, let me give you an example of something that you might want to use a back that you might find easier to do in a batch file than using this interface. Uh, well, maybe I don't want to use this directory, although it provides a good example. Okay, so we'll use this. I'll just make a copy of this here. See now, well, I'll link it somewhere. A temp. 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 Oh, here, here it is. Same file. Okay, now it, it turns out that I don't want these, these are hard links to uh, to those other files. If I modify these, the other files will get modified. So really what I want are, are copies. Let me just get rid of that then. Oh dear, I can't. No, I've screwed myself. Well, I can, but... Oh well, it's too bad. Watch what happens when I do this. I'm just putting this in the recycling bin. One directory. Now, remember where we came from? That was in backups. You notice now that all these things have a little lock, a little lock picture on them. Unfortunately, uh, I can't. I can no. I can't get rid of those locks. <laughs> I can get rid of the picture. However, it turns out that these are also linked to another set of files with the same names. And so, uh, you know, the only way to get rid of the picture would to, uh, be to get rid of the other ones too. And then use my trick. Uh, do it some other day. Uh, what I really want is just a copy of this, not another link. Ten. All right, so that's going to take a while to make a real copy. This is really dumb because I'm sure I could think of a better example. Okay. Notice how these ones, they don't have any you know, symbol on them, because these are brand new files. Alright. Now, suppose this would come up. Suppose what I wanted to do is uh, I want to change the format of these files. Now I, I know I can see the format, right? And it's all contiguous from one, 0 all the way up to uh, 86. Uh, and I don't like this first dot, I just want to get rid of it. Alright? Now, how would you do that with Explorer? Is, how, how do you, what's the command that, what is that, what's the command in Explorer 
that allows you to do that. And I don't think there's any easy way. I could select all these things. And now what? Rename. You see, it's just taken this one in particular. That's no good. Rename. It doesn't allow any multiple renaming. What I can do very easily uh, with the command line. Uh, now, what, uh, one thing that you think might work, and probably, well, it might. You could try it. SRC dot question question dot star to src dot star now that would that would be what I would expect would be the correct command search for this pattern src dot and then any two characters and then dot and then anything else and replace that with src no dot those same two characters and then dot, and then whatever this was. Now, I hope that works, but I don't think it will. Uh -oh. mm -hmm. Did it work? No. See? Didn't do it. Instead, what I gotta do is I gotta invent a batch file. Usually I call them T. <laughs> oh. Fix the color here. Four. Um, now I can just count, but I don't have to. Now, do I want the slash F? Yeah, yeah I think so. In. Usually in capital. And I'll specify the command I want. I can easily get the directory listing of those types of files. SRC dot star, right? And uh, another star if you remember you were here. Do what I want to do. What do I want to do? <clears throat> can I do it in one line? I can extract the name. Maybe, but I'd rather I'll call if I call some function. Some. Okay. When I'm done, I want to make sure I don't run over with myself. Alright, it's like returned. I've got the EOF. Now, the argument that's applied to something will be a file name. Okay, so let's save it off. Okay, now uh, essentially what I want to do is um, rename this file name passed in. First, I'll echo this so I'll make sure I get the right command. Two. Now. Now it's always src dot, right? So if I start from zero and extract the first three letters, that's what that does. And then I want to, I want to skip over that dot.
which would be at position actually at position 3 because it's 0 base 3 and I think that does because if you start if you if you don't supply a second number of characters it should just take everything starting from 3 so now I'm echoing that out. Let's put a pause here so we can see what we get. No, I'm off. Probably has to be four. Oh yeah, because three is the position of the dot. I don't want the dot. So, see, it's going to rename that to that, and then rename that to that, and so on. Now, the problem is, is in this command, because as we're doing this renaming, and this command is processing, it's going to run into the new files, right? So what I should do, really, is rename this is the correct for the file name part everything's fine but just add something at the end to make sure we don't run over ourselves dot ow that's my name okay now let's assume that that all work so now we're going to have everything dot Alan after that and now to turn all those back to the originals that should do it so that should get rid of all the dot elements we can put a pause here so you can see what happens okay. so if it works Oh, it's still echoing. We don't want to echo anymore, we want to do it. And I'll turn on this echo. Okay, so now we've done it. Now we just want to get rid of those Allen. And the next line should do it in this step. See? Now that's something I can do with the batch file. Uh, and that, that's what makes uh, being able to access the command. Being able to um, be at the command prompt uh, can be more useful than than this, right? Anyway, uh, so the next tutorial, uh, this will be a two-part series, and uh, we'll show you how to make those anchors, uh, and uh, and and that involves uh, some advanced. <laughs> I don't even. I wouldn't even call it an S. I would say that it's it's something that probably you never thought of, and probably nobody else ever even thought of. Not not because I'm some sort of genius, but but uh, because uh, I I do that thing. I'll do anything, and whatever it takes to avoid having to use the C the C compiler when I don't need to. See you.